Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Intel has just announced a new generation of the uh, Xeon Scalable Processor platform. It's called Sapphire Rapids, and it comes with a new instruction set that's been specifically designed to accelerate matrix operations, which, as you know, are very common in deep learning. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a cluster um, based on those new Intel CPUs. We'll use brand new AWS instances, and we're going to run a distributed training job on a PyTorch model. And you'll see we get excellent speed up compared to the previous generation of Intel CPUs, and we get really, really good scalability. So if you thought uh, training could only happen on GPUs, well, think again. I'm going to show you otherwise. Okay, let's get started. If you'd like to learn more about this new Intel architecture, you can find some good information on Wikipedia uh, and specifically about the new features like AMX, Advanced Matrix Extensions, which is really the one we're going to dive into. And as the name implies, this brings new instructions to accelerate matrix operations. So this is based on a whole new set of uh, registers, CPU registers. Uh, two-dimensional, of course, just like a matrix. And what this uh, implies, obviously, is you will need kernel support for these. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. So we need to pay attention to which Linux kernel we're using here. And, uh, and the, in the first release, AMX supports uh, BrainFloat16 and Int8 input types. So that gives us flexibility. And it adds uh, an instruction for matrix multiplication. Okay, so uh, multiply two matrices, uh, and obviously that's a super common operation for deep learning uh, training and inference. Okay, and this is already supported in uh, quite a few compilers, so we're good. If you want to see those instructions in detail, you can actually go to the reference documentation for uh, AMX, and you can find those instructions here if you want to see exactly what they look like and what those style registers are etc etc okay but it's pretty much you know load matrices in 2d registers and then uh, multiply those matrices okay exactly what you think but you can go and read all about it okay so that's the um, the whirlwind tour of uh, amx now what do we do to actually get access to that. Uh, so if you're lucky and if you have uh, one of those servers, maybe on your, uh, on your desk or in your data center, that's fine, go and use that. Um, but if you need a cloud option, uh, I believe at the time of recording, the only cloud option for uh, Sapphire Rapids is to use those new R7iZ instances on AWS. They've been launched, or I should say announced, at reInvent just a few weeks ago, uh, and they are still in preview. So for the time being, you will need to sign up, but I'm lucky to, to have access to that already. So that's what we'll use. Um, these are the R family, which are the memory optimized instances. Uh, as you probably know, AWS has lots of families. R is for memory, large memory sizes. Uh, C is for compute, optimize instances, etc. But again, for now, the only uh, available option is this R family. So they'll come with huge memory sizes, uh, which is maybe not what we really want to use for distributed training. We don't really need that. Uh, but again, that's the only option. So until we get maybe C7 IZ, you know, that's what we have to go with. Okay. But as you will see, they work very well. Uh, it's just that they have way too much memory. They're probably a little bit too expensive for, for this purpose, but for a demo, it's fine. So that's what we'll use. Um, and in fact, uh, I've created a few already. Uh, let me maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, and so I've created four. I've actually gone for uh, bare metal instances um because when i build this this was the only instance that, that would actually support the amx instruction set i'm expecting 
you know, very soon you'll be able to use the AMX instructions on the uh, on the virtualized um, R7s as well. Okay, uh, and I've gone for 16XL, which has 32 um, uh, cores, right? So 64 vCPUs. As you can imagine, there's a, a bit of setup to um, to do on those instances. Um, it's not particularly difficult, so um, I'll skip the steps. Um, these are uh, explained in detail in a blog post that I just published, where I'm really walking you through the full setup for um, for those instances. And in fact, what I'm doing here is I'm creating uh, the the master instance right first, and then I'm creating uh, an AWS AMI from that. And I'm using this AMI to fire up the the additional nodes in the cluster. Okay, so there's nothing really difficult. It's really just pip install, you know, uh, Torch and the Intel extension for PyTorch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, it's pretty boring. Uh, there's a little bit of um, of cluster setup. Uh, we need passwordless SSH across those instances so that we can run distributed training without any. Uh, any any issue, but again, uh, you've probably done this many times, and if not, it's all laid out in this blog post. Okay, and if you have trouble, you can ask me questions. Sure. Okay. So um, so I've done this setup. I've got my master node. Okay. Uh, I've got my three additional nodes, all running the same um, Ubuntu AMI with my dependencies installed. We can see them here. Okay. So we have the uh, master node at the top and then the three um, uh, additional nodes here, okay? Uh, and I guess the first thing we could try is we can use uh, LSCPU and we should see those AMX flags here, right? BF16, uh, AMX tile, AMX int 8, right? So that tells me um, these instructions are supported and they are managed by the by the kernel, right? And I'm using uh, Linux 5.15.0, which is the uh, uh, the kernel that actually came with the Ubuntu MIS started from. Okay, technically AMX is only available from Linux 5.16, but I hear this particular AMI, this particular kernel, has been patched by uh, Intel and AWS to keep things uh, simple for us. Okay, so if you have newer AMIs, 5.16 and above, uh, you should be okay. If you want to stick with that same AMI I used, you'll find the, the reference in the blog post, okay? But just make sure you see those AMX flags in LSCPU. Um, that means you're good to go, okay? And of course, we see all the, uh, all the other ones, the AVX 5.12, uh, VNNI and all the previous uh, AVX 5, uh, 512 instructions. Okay, so we're good to go. Um, now we need to do a little bit of setup here um, to make sure we have all the environment variables, right? Uh, so let's go and do this. Uh, so we have just a few things to set. Okay, and this is related to the um, distributed communications library that uh, I'm using here from Intel. Okay, so just set those environment variables here. Otherwise, you know, you'll run into all kinds of issues, of course. Uh, I need to set the, um, the address, the IP address of the master node. So that's the one from the blog post. I need to grab the actual one, uh, which is here. Okay, so let's go and do this. Okay, master. Okay, so that's fine. Next, um, I have some, uh, again, some CCL settings. Uh, so I'm gonna use two threads for uh, CCL communication. I'm gonna let those threads pick uh, whatever uh, CPU socket they want. And I'm gonna work with um, physical cores, okay, physical threads, not uh, hyper threads, okay, just 
to squeeze a little bit more performance. So let's do this. And finally, I need to decide how many uh, processes and how many nodes I'm going to use, right? So I think I have this in my history. Give me a second. Yes, here it is. So first we need to decide how many processes, how many training jobs, literally, uh, we're going to run on each node, okay? So based on uh, the size of those instances, um, you know, I've gone for two. You can experiment three, four, you know, but for, for this particular job, the sweet spot seems to be two. And then I need to decide how many processes I will run total on the cluster. So if I go for two, uh, since I have two processes per node, it means obviously I'm going to be using one single node. Okay, so let's start with that. Okay, um, as, a, as a sanity check that everything works. So here, obviously, I will only run things on the master node, okay? And then I can run this long distributed command, okay? Passing the number of processes, number of processes per node, how many threads uh, I want to use on each node. So I'm using 24 uh, physical uh, threads. Okay, out of the 32 that I have. Uh, keep in mind, I've, I'm using two threads for uh, distributed communication, and so that leaves uh, six threads for the kernel and everything else. Again, feel free to experiment with different values, but for me, 24 was a sweet spot, okay? And then I'm running um, a vanilla example from the Transformers examples. Uh, this is the questions answering uh, example. Okay, where I'm fine tuning distilled BERT on the squad data set, uh, and the other parameters are uh, vanilla stuff. Obviously, I'm not using CUDA, there is no GPU on this instance, but just in case, uh, I'm using the Intel CCL library as the distributed backend, and uh, I'm enabling uh, BF16 as well. Okay, and since I've got the Intel PyTorch extension installed uh, and I've got kernel support for AMX, uh, of course, I'm going to be using uh, those new instructions uh, directly. Okay, so all I have to do is actually run this and it should run right away on that single node. Okay, and that gives us obviously a baseline on uh, the training time for a single instance. Okay, so let it start for a little bit. Um, just for comparison, I think we have the number here. Um, I run this thing on the previous generation of Intel uh, Xeons. And this is the C6i family on AWS. Okay, the Ice Lake family. Uh, exact same software setup. Uh, everything the same except... Uh, an Ice Lake CPU instead of a uh, Sapphire Rapid CPU. And one epoch came at three hours and 30 minutes, okay? And as you can see here, we're somewhere around 26 minutes with this new instance, okay? So that's about 8x faster out of the box. Again, same PyTorch, same everything, only the chip is different. So just moving from Ice Lake um, to Sa Sapphire Rapids gives you an 8x training speed up. Okay, that's that's huge, right? That's huge. Um, and that's good news, right? Because now, you know, um, these training times are very reasonable and we can actually run those workloads on CPUs uh, and not on GPUs, right? And running on CPU is just more flexible. You certainly have tons of CPU servers laying around uh, and you can repurpose them maybe. Maybe they're doing something else and you can just reinstall them as uh, training servers. And then once you're done, you know, repurpose them as, I don't know, web servers or database servers, which you can't really do with GPU servers, which, you know, are generally uh, um, only good for uh, deep learning training and inference. So CPU is, is a really interesting option. Okay, so about 24 minutes. So let's uh, let's stop it there, okay? And then I'm gonna launch top here so that we can see what's going on 
on those other nodes and now we're going to start scaling things okay so we're going to say hey run four processes okay we'll stick to two processes per node so now this means of course i'm going to use two nodes okay uh, and they've uh, they've been listed here okay node one two three okay so, so obviously one two three okay so let's run this mpi command again exact same command um, we don't need to change anything and we can see here the two Python um, processes starting. Obviously, node two, node three are doing nothing. And we can see the training time now is about 14, 20, 14, 30 uh, minutes. Okay, so yeah, almost, I don't know, not exactly divided by two because we have a little bit of uh, distributed communication overhead but uh, pretty close to a linear scaling, okay? And as you can see, you know, I didn't change anything. I just said, hey, give me more processes. So, uh, you know, kudos to, uh, to the, the Intel library and, uh, you know, MPI for keeping that process very simple. And, um, and obviously, um, I'm using the, the built-in examples from the Transformers library which already support um, distributed training and everything. So uh, if you want to see how to adapt maybe your own code for that, um, that's not difficult. Just go and look at those examples and you can see it's it's basically using the, um, the built-in distributed training features in PyTorch. There's nothing weird in there, right? Um, it's, uh, it's fairly transparent. Okay, so why don't we try, keep scaling and try, six so now we should be using three nodes okay yep so we see python here and here and now we're down to you know 11 minutes or something a little less than that okay you gotta give it a minute or two to hit cruising speed okay so, you know, we keep scaling nicely and, you know, we can see the number of threads that are being used here um, is consistent with uh, with what we asked, right? Again, feel free to experiment, you know, try maybe a few more uh, processes per node um, and obviously it will divide, um, uh, the, they, they will share the number of threads allocated. So, you know, you need to tweak a little bit, but for me, those settings were pretty good, right? Okay, and let's try and put all nodes to work. So let's say eight. Run that again. <clears throat> and let's see where we end up. So yeah, seven, 7.30, right? 7.30, which is pretty close, uh, a little less than that even, um, which is pretty close to linear scaling, right? Uh, we started at, I think, 26, and we're down to seven and a half minutes, so that, that's pretty close. And um, again, you can tweak some more and improve on this, I'm sure. Uh, you can keep scaling to, uh, you know, eight nodes, 16 nodes, etc. although now this is becoming a really short training job. <laughs> just you know seven minutes i think is is fine but um of course if you train for more epochs if you train on bigger data sets you know you may want to use more servers but you can see um uh, all it takes is really having a bunch of those servers laying around having uh um, an ami that you can easily use to um to add nodes uh to to the cluster and and that's about it um this is really a very simple process uh, once you've done this initial setup you can just add servers to the cluster uh, in minutes and scale, 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 right? Um, and this is a really cool distributed training job, if you ask me, okay? So again, we're using question and answers here, but you can go and try uh, additional jobs. Uh, they should all support the, the distributed training uh, mechanism that I'm showing here, okay? Well, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you today. Um, so again, go and read about um, AMX. 
uh, please check out the blog post for the full setup procedure. Um, go and check out those new uh, R7iz instances and you'll have everything you need to just re replicate that demo that I showed you today. Okay, and of course, if you have questions, uh, happy to answer them. I, I will put all the links in the video description. Okay, well, that's it for today. Hope this was useful and interesting. And until next time, keep rocking.